Hello, my name is Mike Geig, and welcome to my video on Dialogs in my series on Windows Programming with C-Sharp. You may have worked with Dialogs in the past, and you may not have. If you haven't, you might be wondering, what is a Dialog? Well, in Windows Programming, a Dialog is basically a window. Uh, any window is, is essentially a Dialog. Uh, so if we have like a message box or uh, a, a color dialog box or pop-up box or even a form can be considered a dialog. Uh, dialogs have different properties depending on the type of dialog they are. And we're going to look at a couple different ones. Before I do that, I want to talk about something that, that relates to all dialogs. And that's this term modal. A dialog that is modal will prevent you from working on anything but that dialog. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Non-modal dialogs allow you to work with, with any dialog that's currently open. Okay, uh, So just keep that in mind. That's that vocabulary term modal. And you're going to hear me refer to that a lot, modal. Um, and depending on the how you open up different dialogs can also dictate whether or not the same dialog is modal or non-modal. Uh, so the first dialog we're going to look at is called the message box dialog. Um, it's actually been kind of a pain for me to refrain from using it because I like using it so much in my previous videos because I wanted to wait until we got to dialogues before we started talking about it. So uh, so it's, it joys me now to finally be able to use the message, bo do message box dialog because it's so useful. So I'm going to go ahead and add a button in my form here. I'll just drop that on there like that. And what I want to do is I'm going to generate a click event. And in here, I'm simply going to say message box dot show. And inside here, I'm going to say hello world. All right. Message box is a dialog. Okay. And we're going to see it. It's like a pop-up box. All right. It also happens to be a modal dialog. So when I run this, I see my button and I click and I get hello world. Now, I know this is modal because I can't work. Oops. Oops, I accidentally selected my text there. Let me rerun this. I know it's modal because I can't manipulate the form behind it. All right? I have to finish this window before I can go back. More importantly, if there was any code following this message box that show in the previous form, it hasn't run yet. The whole processing of form one has been halted while this modal dialog is up. All right, I'm going to hit OK here. Now I can work with Form 1 again. I can even illustrate the point further by adding a label. All right, and in my button click, after a message box that show, I'm also going to say label1.text uh, equals uh, message box was opened, just like that. And when I run this and I click button 1, you'll notice it doesn't say it yet. That next line of code has not run. The whole process is stopped until I do something with this window. And then I hit OK, and then the next line of code runs. OK. So that's message box. That's a modal dialog. And there's a lot we can actually do with message boxes. All right. Um, for instance, let me go ahead and get rid of this button and this label. Have you ever gone to close a program and it says, hey, are you sure you want to close? All right. Um, and then you say either yes or no, right? Depending. Uh, we can do that. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to click on my form, and then I'm going to come into my event, and I'm going to look for uh, where are you? Form closing, not form closed. Form closing. All right. Form closing means the form is about to close but has not closed yet. If you do anything in the form closed event, it's too late. The form has closed. All right, you can't go back at that point. So closing happens obviously before something is closed. So I'll double click in here to create myself an event handler. All right, and what I want to do is I want to pop a message box and say, hey, are you sure you want to close? All right, and then I want the user to say either yes or no. All right. If they say yes, we're going to close the program. If they say no, we're going to cancel it. Okay. Um, so here you'll notice, uh, as per our video on events, the previous video, this time we don't have just event args. We have form closing event args, uh, e, which has some new properties that can prevent us from from closing this form. All right. 
And so what I want to do is this time, I don't just want to show a message box. I want to show a message box with buttons. Okay. Um, so I'll just show you how to create the message box first, and then we'll work on working with that data. So I'm going to say message box dot show. And you see I have 21 different things I can say here. All right. So there's a lot of ways we can write this. So I'm going to say, uh, are you sure you want to quit? And then I'm going to do comma, and it's going to ask me if I want a caption. Uh, and my caption is going to be close. And then finally, buttons. Now here's the nice thing about Visual Studio. Just by hitting comma, it already pops in this, hey, uh, click me right here. So I'm like, okay, I'll click that. Message box buttons, dot, and okay, I've got abort, retry, ignore. That's not what I want. Okay, no, I'm trying to ask him a question. Okay, cancel, that could work. Uh, retry or cancel. Or how about yes, no? Yes, no is probably what I want to go with here. So I'll add in yes, no, and then I will close it. So now I'll run my program. And when I hit the red X, it says, hey, are you sure you want to quit? All right, and there's that close. Now, I can't hit the red X here because it wants an answer. I have to answer it. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter which one I click uh, because I'm not doing anything with that. But once I hit yes or no, this method, the show method here, returns back my result. All right, so I have to catch it. I have to do something with that. So I can say dialog result, result. All right, and then result equals this message box dot show. And then finally, if result, oops, result equals, and like, see, it already highlights it for us, system.windows.forms.dialogresult dot no. So they said, no, I don't want to quit. All right. If they say no, then we do e.cancel equals true. So in this particular instance, we're telling e, the event arguments, we're saying, hey, cancel that. We're not closing this form. All right? Cancel what you're trying to do. So let's run it, and then we'll talk about the code one more time. So I'm going to run it here, and I'm going to click this. I'm going to say, hey, are you sure you want to quit? No, I don't want to quit, and we don't. Then I click, hey, are you sure you want to quit? Yes, then we do. All right, so we're creating a variable that's capable of storing a dialog result. Then we're storing message box show into it. And then we're just saying, hey, if, all right, if result is a no, that this is just a long-winded way of getting to this here. All right, if it's a no, we cancel this. All right, a shorter hand way of saying this is, by, is we can do this. I'm going to... Delete some stuff here. Delete this here. So something else we can do. Instead of doing the dialog result and all that stuff, we can say if message box dot show equals dialog result dot no. It's a longer it makes for a longer line of code, but it makes for only one line of code as opposed to three. Um, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Either way, it really works. You can sort of do whatever you want there. Um, but we can just sort of see this this function here. And it'll still function the exact same. I hit that X. Are you sure you want to quit? No. Uh, are you sure you want to quit? Yes. Okay. So since it's modal, it's going to sit here until the user clicks yes or no. And then it's going to finish this line of code and cancel if it's ready to cancel. Okay. Um, this message box is great. Uh, we can also do something, um, you know, if the result was, say, uh, oops, was, say, uh, yes, or retry, or abort. So there's a lot of different things we can do there um, to modify that and to look for a bunch of different responses. Okay. Okay, so the next dialog I want to talk about is the color dialog. All right, this is a pretty neat dialog that's built in. Uh, you're going to notice there's just a, a ton of functionality built into this Windows program with C-sharp.net. Uh, all of these things just, just exist already. Someone's already put in all this time to make them work for us. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I am going to scroll down and find my, where are you at? my dialog section, and I'm going to find color dialog.
Now you'll see the color dialog gets added down here. It doesn't get put in the form because it gets added to the form, but it's not a visual component yet. We have to call it. Uh, so this basically just references it and links it to this form, and then we have to actually use it in code. So uh, let's look at how to do that. I'm going to come over here to my form1.cs, and actually, you know, I'm going to come back over here to my design. I'm going to add a button. Scroll back up to my button, and this button we'll put it up top here, and we'll make the text say change color. And we'll need to make it a little bit bigger and center it on the form. Okay, change color, fantastic. So when I double click in there, I can go ahead and open up my color dialog. So I can say color dialog dot show. Or in this case, show dialog, sorry. Show dialog on this one. Um, and we'll run this. And we get this color picker. Again, notice that the color dialog is modal. All right, which means we can't manipulate form one behind it. All right, uh, and this allows us to pick colors. Now I can hit, I can define custom colors and do all sorts of neat stuff. Um, I can cancel, I can hit OK, or I can hit this red X. Now this doesn't do anything yet. It purely lets us pick a color, but we're not doing anything with that color yet. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how we do that. Um, yes, I'm sure I want to quit. Okay, so. Once the dialog or the color dialog is up, you pick a color. It's going to store that color internally. So I can do something like this dot back color. All right, this being form one. All right, this dot back color equals color dialog dot color. And let's run it. So we'll hit change color. I will pick this bright green and I will hit OK and our form changes to a bright green. I'll choose a dark blue and we get a dark blue. Now there's a problem here with this and let me show you what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Yes, I want to quit. I'm going to rerun it. All right. And now I'm going to click change color. Let's say red and let's say, OK, I've decided I don't want to change my color. I'm going to hit cancel. Well, unfortunately, uh, it still changed the color, all right? Uh, the reason being is when I click change color, black is automatically selected. Even though I choose red and hit cancel, it's going to say, okay, he didn't want red. We're going to go back to black. And then the very next line sets our background color, all right? So what we want is to only change the background color if the user hits OK, not if they hit cancel or X, because it doesn't make sense for them to be like, no, I don't want to change the color, cancel, and then us to still be like, oh, we're changing the color. Okay, so we need to make a decision here. We need to have an if statement. Okay, we need to say, hey, if they hit OK. So let's look at it like this. Let's say if color dialog dot show dialog equals system dot windows dot forms dot dialog result dot OK. If they hit OK, we change the background color. All right. If they don't, we don't. So we hit play. And I'll go change color, red, cancel, change color, red, OK, we get red. All right. And yes, I'm sure I want to quit. OK. So again, modal dialog. All right. We need to do the dot show dialog double equals with the, the result to make sure the user hit OK, because the user could hit anything. The user could even hit the red X. Um, and we only want to do something if the user hits OK. All right. But basically, color dialog allows us to change colors. I could even do, um, let's change this here, uh, button one. I believe it's still back color for yep still back color for button one so button one dot back color so let's say we're not changing the color of the form we're changing the color of the button see yeah we can do that color pickers just allow us to grab a color which it stores internally and we can use that color for whatever we want just apply it to anything that has a color all right so it's not necessarily just for forms or just for buttons it's for anything that has a color and the color dialog itself doesn't change a color. It simply stores the color that you pick, all right, until you want to use it somewhere. All right, that's all the color dialog does. Okay, so we got our color dialog there. So let's talk about a couple other, a uh, couple other ones here. I'm gonna add another button and a label. 
All right. Um, and I'm just going to talk about a couple more dialogues that we have. I'm going to go to my toolbox, go back down to the dialogues. We'll pick um, open file dialog and say uh, a, a font dialog. All right. Um, and so let me say here is my button here. I'm going to say change font uh, like this. And actually, I'll add another button. going to say find file we'll make them all the same size okay um, and so change font when I double click that I can do a font dialog one dot show show dialog in this one all right and I can run that and when I change font I get this font picker all right again this is more useful if we have like say a ridge text box um, I'm not going to go through the, the whole process of, of setting that up and changing fonts and stuff like that, but that's basically what you use this for. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and set up our find file here. All right, so my find file is going to be file dialog, or I'm sorry, open file dialog. I typed that wrong. Open file dialog dot show dialog. All right, and I'll go ahead and run this. And when this pops up, I can click Find File. And this should feel like a very familiar dialog to you. Uh, I can pick test.txt. Uh, when I hit Open, obviously nothing happens because all these dialogs do is they store your answers. And it's up to the programmer, or you in this situation, uh, to do something with that. So I could say um, if open file dialog dot show dialog equals dialog result dot OK. So we only want to do anything if the user hits OK. We don't want to do anything if the user doesn't. All right, so that, that's very important to have there. So if the user hits OK, then we're going to say label one dot text is going to equal open file dialog dot file name. OK. Um, normally, you would have some file opener code uh, which we're going to cover in this series a little bit later, working with flat files, all right, uh, and you'll pass this file name in. All the open file dialog does is opens or, or stores the path to some file. That's all it does. It's, all it does is stores text. So I'll run it. I'll hit find file. I'll choose test.txt. I'll hit open, and I see C colon slash test slash test.txt, all right? So it stores that full absolute path for me. And yes, I'm sure I want to quit. Okay. All right. So that is going to cover our conversation about dialogues. Remember, dialogues can be either modal or non-modal. We looked at all modal dialogues right now, but in a little bit, we're going to talk about having multiple forms. Uh, in, in that, we can create non-modal dialogues. Um, so stay tuned for that. That's coming up in the very next video.